Hadi, bozu, hello, bonjour. So nice to have Tracy Chapman start off our workshop, That Beautiful Voice Calms Us All. My name is Ryan Muirhead, and I'd like to welcome you all to Sage Lesserts workshop, What About Intimacy? Thank you for taking part in our Moosehide Campaign Day and supporting our pledge to end violence against women and children. I would like to acknowledge that I am a visitor on the traditional territory of the Malahat people, a beautiful land of sea, mountains, and forest. I have a few housekeeping matters just to go over before we begin our workshop. If you have a question, please put it in the chat and Sage will do her best to answer them while you are in your breakout rooms. The chat will only be viewable to our facilitators today so that we can keep this space safe for our participants. You will have access to chat in the breakout rooms and we will be doing our best to keep you safe. There is an ask for help button that you may use if you are feeling unsafe, witnessing hate speech, or are feeling triggered. You can also email me directly at rmirhead at moosehidecampaign.ca, which you should see in the chat. If you have any questions for me or technical difficulties, you can also reach out to me in the chat, and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to introduce you to our wonderful host the amazing Sage Lassert. She is the National Youth Ambassador of the Moosehide Campaign, spreading our message across Canada, using her voice as a tool for change. Sage earned her BA in Gender Studies from the University of Victoria and was the recipient of the Jamie Castles Undergraduate Research Award in 2018. Her work focuses on engaging young people and students in conversation surrounding gender-based violence, Indigenous feminism, and cultural resurgent action. In 2018, SAGE founded the SAGE Initiative, an impact investment collective for Indigenous women between the ages of 18 and 29 who are interested in social impact investments. When not speaking or training, SAGE can be found singing R&B music or sitting in her role as an advisor to the Lieutenant Governor of British Columbia. Over to you, SAGE. Thank you, Ryan Massey. Hadi Sage Lissert Sadni, um, Loretta Madam Slu, Paul Lissert Spa, Tebe Snachaya Injan Lokwangin Keo, Sai Kana Lashubu Injan Yinkak Dene Keo. Hello, everyone. Um, for those of you who don't speak the carrier language, um, I said my name is Sage Lissert. I am a carrier woman from the Lake Babine Nation. My mother is the late Loretta Madam, and my dad is Paul Lissert. And I hope you just heard some of his beautiful words um, earlier today. I'm a member of the Bear Clan. Um, which was passed down to me matrilinearly by my mother and her mother and her mother and her mother. I'm here today to open a conversation about um, the opposite of violence. I'm here to talk about love and intimacy and the ways we express love um, to each other in healthy and fulfilling ways. This um, has practices from cultures all around the world um, and we'll get into some body work. Um, many of you have learned today that because of COVID, there are two major factors um, that contribute to heightened levels of violence. The first is social isolation and the second is um, economic downturn. So as our economies take a tumble, we have all experienced new nuanced um, financial strains that impact our families, how we feel about money, um, how we spend it, how hard we must work to ensure as individuals and how hard we must work to ensure our families have the best quality of life. And for me, one of the biggest things um, on my mind when it comes to everyday intimacies and how to end violence is to practice personal accountability. 
for myself to consider what are the things that contribute to a good quality of life. Um, many of you read the description for this workshop. You signed up and now you're here. So I thank you for that. Um, we're gonna talk about intimacies in a really hands-on way. So we're gonna use our bodies, um, the room, listen to music, uh, storytelling, hopefully some dance, um, journaling and drawing. So I'd invite you to please um, get a piece of paper or uh, something that you can write with um, now. And I will ask um, throughout our time here for us to find spaces where we can sit on the floor comfortably or lay down on the floor comfortably and um, whatever, whatever you're able to do and whatever you're willing to do. So um, just kind of make those considerations for yourself now. What, what are you willing and able to do today? I think a lot of people want to know what we're going to talk about. Um, just what I mentioned earlier, I'd like to ask everyone to write down um, five things that you believe promote a good quality of life. It can be anything. I would ask that you be honest. No one else can see these. I'd also invite you to, um, if you are an artist, um, to do some doodles. Um, I think that maybe sometimes we're, when we are trying to do thought generation and um, there's so much emphasis on just putting something down on paper. And I, I really want to invite you to, um, to define these things however you'd like to. Write down a few things that you associate with intimacy. Intimacies that we practice every day. So intimacy, I think maybe if you opened up a dictionary would say something like intimacy is closeness between people. Intimacy is closeness to something. Intimacy is closeness to oneself. It's what builds over time as you connect with people, as you grow to care for each other and feel more and more comfortable during your time together. <laughs> it can include physical and emotional closeness um, or even a mix of the two. I'd kind of, I'd like to make a note that intimacy isn't synonymous with sex, but you've probably heard intimacy in the context of sex and romance a lot. Um, people use the term being intimate um, to mean sexual activity. Your relationships with your family and your friends and other trusted people um, all include elements of intimacy. To figure out what int intimacy means to you, I think maybe we can even explore those a little bit. Um, it falls into several categories. Um, emotional intimacy, what you're willing to share with people. Physical intimacy. Um, things that I really love. One of my love languages is physical touch. And I think that hugging and embracing and relaxing on the couch, kissing, um, hand holding, playing, all of those things are included in physical intimacy. 
everyday physical intimacies that you can practice with many people. Intellectual intimacy is one of my favorites. It's the willingness to share your ideas without being scared that they will be rejected and without the fear that they are wrong. Who has the power to say that our thoughts and intellectual minds are incorrect? Um, I'm gonna take this off. <laughs> Recreational intimacy. So willing to do stuff um, for fun kind of thing, like hiking, I think is a big one, going swimming with someone. If you can imagine being in a lake or a river, swimming um, on a really beautiful day with a close friend or a partner, or even when you were a younger person, like with your parents or your siblings, and just having that closeness with them. You could tell them if you were peeing in the river. You wouldn't say that to anyone. And that is an intimacy that I find to be so beautiful. You, you find that in sport. If any of you play hockey or any team sports, um, that's a really important one as well. You trust those people a lot. So um, my favorite form of intimacy um, is in practice with, with myself. I think that we often think about intimacy projected with others um, in partnership we have to start with ourselves. So, um, and we're so hard on ourselves. Um, I don't, we, we're so hard on ourselves. We think I don't make enough money. I'm not successful enough. I wanna move somewhere better. Um, I wanna be somewhere else. My fear is that these thoughts are bringing us away from our presence. There's so much beauty in our presence. And many people use substances, um, exercise, television, um, other people to distract themselves from their, from their present self. When we spend time with ourselves, we, uh, we learn things about how we view the world we learn about how much we love ourselves. We see our own lived experiences from a different perspective each time we visit them. Sometimes we don't like what we see. So there's some avoidance there. Before we can know others intimately, we must first know ourselves but a lot of us don't take the time to really be with ourselves and decode who we are, uh, what we think, how we're feeling. And this is meant to be done all the time. This is meant to be done all the time to check in with yourself because we're always changing and shifting and growing. This also includes check-ins about what our needs are at that time. Those are changing always as well. What our, what our values are, what our, our highest values are, what intimacy means to us, what falling in love is. There's a close link between um, physical and emotional intimacy. Receiving and giving physical signs of affection can, um, can boost your mental health, no matter what the form. In fact, um, Research has found that those who are touch deprived are more likely to experience heightened levels of stress um, and depression. Can I get an amen for that? Like, woo, <laughs> being touch deprived, like even just reading that right now is kind of challenging. Um, and so I wanted to bring this to the table. I wanted to invite everyone to stand, to please stand in, in the space that you're in. And um, I would ask that we start to tap our bodies 
starting with our cheeks and our forehead. Gentle traps across your chest, down your arms. This is waking up your parasympathetic nervous system and bringing energy to the areas of your body that are asking for attention. So listen to your body and go wherever it's asking you to go. I think for me right now, it's kind of like around my hips and on my back a little bit, my belly. Then for the next minute or so, I'd like you to open your arms and wrap around and give yourself a big hug and keep, keep, hold this embrace. And I'd like you to stay here for one minute. So get comfortable if you have to kind of like grasp your shoulders a little bit, maybe even a little bit of a rock. Just stay like this. Check in with yourself. A couple of deep breaths. It's been, um, for those of you who are fasting and supporting fasters, for those of you who are here for loved ones, this is, um, this is a really powerful and meaningful day and Sometimes we forget to just pause for a second and check in with how our body is feeling. Maybe just ask yourself, how is my body feeling right now? And offer two or three feeling words. Maybe a deep breath. Maybe a little pat on the shoulder or on the back um, when you're ready to let go. And um, if you're standing, um, however you'd like to do this, I'd like you to find a space where you can see your reflection, preferably not on the screen. So if there is a mirror or a window, um, anything, or even, I mean, you can do it with your phone, um, but find a reflection, a reflective surface. This is a practice I was given um, recently uh, by a stranger, by somebody I didn't know and they saw that I was having a challenging day and they offered me this practice and they said that somebody had offered it to them many years ago and that it really, it really changed, changed their life. So I'd invite you to take, take off some of the masks that you're wearing I'd invite you to consider how many masks you're wearing um, in this moment. If you're at home or at an office, what masks you may have up right now. I'd invite you to place your hand in front of your face and remove one. This is, this is you. This is where we're able to see ourselves as our authentic selves, where we can express 
uncomfortable truths, feelings, our needs, and what's often running through our minds is our fears, our worries, our concerns, our internal daily struggles. Right now, just take a moment to reflect on how you feel when you're in your own company. Maybe you look at yourself, invitation to look at yourself in, in the reflective space. And then ask your body again, how that feels when, when you look at yourself while we're talking about this. For those that feel resistant to that, it's not silly. We're gonna be here for, for an hour and I, I, I want you to buy in as much as you can. There's so much there inside of you waiting to be sweet and deliciously enjoyed. The tenderness, the creativity, uncharted territory in your mind. You are so young and precious. You're a baby in this world. You're a blessing to this world. And your, your life has yet to be uncovered even still. You are your greatest mystery to be tapped into and explored. So I would like to offer this practice something that has helped me with self love and my confidence, confidence in, in my own voice and in my body. So I, I invite you to look at yourself where you're standing and you're on mute. No one can hear you. You are safe. And I would like to ask you to trust me for a moment and to repeat after me. There will be a moment when I say my own name, when I say Sage, and I'd invite you to say your own name. So when we're ready, <laughs> to look at ourselves and repeat after me. I love myself. I love myself. I won't give up. I won't. I won't give in. I am unique. I am the only sage in the universe. I am priceless. I love myself. I won't give up. I won't give in. I am unique. I am the only sage in the universe. I am priceless. I love myself. I won't give up. I won't give in. I am unique. I am the only sage in the universe. I'm priceless. I invite you to, um, to keep that and to say that to yourself in the mirror every day 
and say it as many times as you need until you get all the sillies out and the wiggles out and the laughing and the discomfort about looking yourself, looking yourself in the eye and saying those things. Repeat it until you can put your entire self behind it. Everything in yourself. every day. We spend so much energy on others, talking to others, giving all that energy. The first person I, I want to talk to and to check in with is myself. Every morning. So I welcome you to become comfortable wherever that is. So yeah, back in your seat or um, yeah, if you're, if you're wanting to stretch or sit on the floor, that's awesome. Um, and I want to invite us to um, be able to talk about that a little bit. Um, I think you're, you're doing a lot of listening today. And so I, I want to invite you to chat a little bit. Um, and so we're going to put you into um, small groups and um, I'd ask that you are mindful of time. Each of you has about a minute to share their reflections that you had um, about self-love, about this mindfulness practice, um, anything that you'd like to share. Um, so please be mindful of time, make sure each person in the group has a moment and um, I'd ask that we join our small groups now. So today we are exploring intimacy. And if you heard my dad speak, um, or if you've heard him speak before, um, you may remember him saying that our family practices into me see. Intimacy, where we share stories um, of our own experiences to show vulnerability emotional intimacy is when people feel safe sharing their feelings with each other, um, even uncomfortable ones. Um, today is a great opportunity um, for intention setting, where we can think of the women and children in our lives that we love and want to ensure that they enjoy the full range of rights and freedoms during their time on earth. I'd welcome everyone to think about who you are here for. For those of us who are fasting, I would like to thank you for your sacrifice and remind you to keep those precious ones at the top of your mind. If you have your phone, which I think most people do, to maybe even go in your photos and to pull up um, a photo of even yourself or of somebody that you love and to just to set your gaze on them for a second to bring them into your mind's eye um, and to consider uh, how, how precious they are to you. I often um, think of my sister's daughter, Cedar, who's two years old. She's my baby niece. I don't have any children of my own, but I do think of her, um, even offer a prayer for them. Maybe even smile at the photo. Today's an opportunity for us to connect to our relatives, our loved ones, and our ancestors while we're in ceremony. When I was 14, I started fasting. I fasted for three, days and for three nights. Every year, every year for three years, I fasted for three days and three nights. And my mom was always struggling like with chronic pain and depression and with the struggles of providing for her siblings um, who are all residential school survivors, including herself. And I knew that um, she was always in pain. And when I asked myself what my intentions were um, for fasting, I said I was doing it for her. 
And I felt like it was something that I had control over, even if I didn't have any money or if I didn't have anything to give um, that would help her. I wanted to give my intentional ceremonial commitment. Um, I knew that it would make my ancestors happy and could feel how happy they were when I was fasting. My mom is in the spirit world um, now and she has been since, since I was um, in high school, since I was 17 and I miss her a lot. Um, but I get to visit her when, when I do this practice. And I want to, I want to share that practice with you all. Coming together in ceremony is one of the most healing and grounding practices I've ever experienced. This world that's so fixated on the self, the embodied self our embodied lives, capital, being in the present. I wanted to offer an exercise that helps us visit the spirit world where our ancestors live. I wanted to offer an exercise that focuses on the collective and spirit and imagination and the past. So um, I would like to ask that um, there's going to be a song that plays um, just to help bring us to this space. I'd ask that you put your feet on the ground. and or plant your hands on a grounding surface. And um, let me know if you if if you need to adjust the volumes. Um, feel free to sit on the floor or lay down. We'll be here for a few minutes. Make yourself comfortable. And I invite you to close your eyes now, wherever, wherever you choose to be. Take a deep breath in your nose and sigh, exhale. Another deep breath through the nose. Exhale. Exhale through the nose or the mouth. Steady your breath. Start to feel a little bit heavier. Let gravity take you. Try to point out a sound in the room. Feel the temperature of the room on your skin. When your clothes feel on your skin. Take a deep breath through the nose. energy filling the room, the air around you. Imagine the energy around your body as 
light. What color is it? Now I invite you to float and imagine looking at yourself from above. Seeing yourself in your space with your eyes closed. Seeing yourself breathing, deep breath through the nose. And I would like to invite you to picture your mother's face. If you don't know what your mother looks like, then I invite you to imagine her face. Feel her energy, how that makes you feel. Where she may be. Deep breath through the nose. I'd like you to imagine a hand on her shoulder. Follow the hand up, arm, and there is your grandmother. Imagine her face. What her hands look and feel like. What she may say to you if she were to be with you right now. I like to say thank you to her. Deep breath through the nose. Sigh, exhale. Again, following the hand on her shoulder, back to your great grandmother. Often the generation where we may not know what they look like. I invite you to imagine what her face looks like. Where she may have been in the world in this present. Invitation to follow a hand on her shoulder to your great, great grandmother. Deep breath through the nose the belly being with your great great grandmother this is the ancestral world acknowledge her invitation to imagine what language she may have spoken, what her clothes may have looked like. Look at her and she looks over her shoulder, the line of matriarchs that came before her that make up your lineage that have given you life through an unbroken line of water. Each of these matriarchs have carried you. Beginning with our collective first mother, Mother Earth. Their stories, experiences, and knowledge have been passed down to you for countless generations. The big, breath through the nose into the belly. Welcome whatever's coming to the body. Welcome tears if they come. Big deep 
breath through the nose and let whatever sound exhale follows. This knowledge, this feeling is your birthright. Follow the line of water back to your mother. Elf. For those of you who have children, imagine putting your hand on your child's shoulder. Standing together as united people, we must nurture ourselves, each other, and our shared first mother, Mother Earth. Deep breath through the nose. Now, an invitation to wiggle the toes. Keep your eyes closed, but to start traveling back to the physical world. Continuing to take deep breaths through the nose. You're sitting down. Um, I invite you to put your gaze to the floor. And if you're laying down, to invitation to put your hands over your eyes if you'd like to, um, as you're opening them to soften our travels back to the physical world. Back to our physical presence. Just be gentle with yourself for a moment. Full deep breaths. Maybe even a hand on the chest, or again, a hug and just rubbing the skin on the arms and the chest, maybe even your belly. Welcoming your body back to the physical world with gentleness. come back to the circle um, when when you feel ready and I want to um, I want to ask for for some reflections because we we just we just participated in a ceremony together and I wanna ask you for some reflections when we go into another circle in a smaller circle. And if you're willing to share, I would say, um, I would ask what generation was the last you were able to see and imagine? What came up for you while you were visiting the spirit world? So we'll go into a smaller groups again to chat about it. And we have a little bit more time. This time we have three minutes per person. So, and I encourage you to take the full three minutes. One person <laughs> speaks at a time. Um, please try to be a good listener and to just allow that person their experience. And then we'll come back together. How was the circles? Good. Um, I really appreciate the level of sharing. And I think it's a really powerful day today and to be able to spend spend time um, just 
being being ourselves and being vulnerable with each other. Um, we were talking about this in, in my smaller group, but um, often when I do this, I, I mentioned before, this is the only way I can talk to my mom. And I do this all the time. And I just burst out crying. <laughs> Usually I like to do it on the floor. Um, I lay down and I put like a little bag over my eyes. And I just sit with her. And sometimes I can feel her hand on mine when I imagine um, the shoulder. She puts her hand on my shoulder and she rubs my shoulder. And then she brings it down to my hand and she puts her hand in mine. And the first time that happened, um, I was listening to that song. It's called, Oh, I Love You. And I was crying already and I was fine. And then towards the end of the song, when the voice comes in and it says, Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. Then I just like, <laughs> totally let go. <laughs> Um, so thank you for, for doing that with me and, um, you can keep that and use that whenever, whenever you feel like visiting the spirit world. Um, and I think that now that we have a little bit of a, we've seen each other a little bit more, um, that it only seems fitting to make a smooth transition from talking about our ancestors to talking about how we're brought to earth. Um, <laughs> I'm going to show a picture <laughs> and try and like cut my <laughs> like I'm like really, really emotional today. Wow. Woo. Okay. So this is one of my favorite movies. Happy Feet is one of my favorite movies in the world. I love watching Happy Feet. All of my friends call me Mumble because I dance like Mumble's Happy Feet and I just like wiggle around all the time. I love the animation. I love that it's a kid's movie with like lots of mature humor in it. Um, I love that Robin Williams does many of the penguins' voices, um, <laughs> including Lovelace, who is this penguin, who is a guru love penguin. And the penguins collect pebbles to show um, during mating season that they're the most um, suitable bachelor. Um, and he reads the future and then they give them their pebbles. So he's in this image, he's like standing on this mountain of pebbles and Mumble asks him um, if he's ever been abducted by aliens. And, <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, lovely Ruth Ron's like, how dare you ask me this ridiculous question? How dare you ask the great Lovelace? <laughs> Um, why don't you go forth and multiply? And then he kind of like moves his hips in like a sexy way and he goes, why don't we all go forth and multiply? <laughs> and then goes off with his like, just like horde of women and like kind of goes off and kind of dives into his pebbles. And I always thought that was like so cool <laughs> and like sexy um, <laughs> but we already know that intimacy is not another word for sex necessarily um i had to just use that reference because i think it's really funny and i also wanted to show you that i'm not afraid to make a fool of myself <laughs> Um, I'd ask that we bring out our paper again that we used or a different paper or whatever you want to write on um, and just write down the things that you it, associate in your mind. Nobody's going to see this. You can crumple this up right away afterwards and throw it away. No one will see it. Write things down that you associate with sexual intimacy.
it can be with yourself or with others or with the earth or energetically. Um, but just take, take a minute to write down like 10 things. So um, you can keep writing or drawing or whatever you want to do. Um, sexual intimacy is rooted in, in feeling safe with yourself and, and your own mind and body and also feeling safe with others. This is another form of intimacy that's heavily dependent on vulnerability. There are often a lot of anxieties and insecurities surrounding sex and sexuality. Um, many cultures that have shame surrounding sex and sexuality and exploring our bodies Intimacy can help you um, feel more loved and less alone. Intimacy also requires a great deal of trust. Trusting yourself, other people. And, and th those fears and, and those insecurities, um, there are a lot of common causes for those. Um, Fear of abandonment, someone will leave. Um, fear of rejection, um, control, taking control of others or, or feeling like you're being controlled or having had past experiences of abuse. So those, those can all manifest in fears and insecurities. Um, a worry that will be shot down if we bring something up. Um, or I think if you bring up a new idea that's out of the ordinary, something from your imagination that is uniquely yours and someone yucks it, says, that's not for them can be really scary. So, and it's, it's possible to overcome these fears. We must be patient with ourselves. And it only comes with talking openly about it. <laughs> Woo. So we're going to, we're going to start with the easy stuff today. We're not going to do anything scary, super easy stuff. My suggestion is to let this aspect of yourself breathe. Um, if there, if you have any discomfort, I would say expect discomfort and always welcome yourself to pull back, but, but sit, be, sit in your discomfort. You're okay. Um, for me as an indigenous woman, I haven't been too exposed to too many to many healthy outlets um, and healthy representations of indigenous sexuality. Um, but I've always been curious about erotica and exploration of sexual spaces that incorporate 
indigenous worldviews. Um, there's so much beauty in exploring one's own sexual intimacies um, on their own through masturbation, um, becoming more comfortable with the body, um, touching, um, taking a bath, just being with your body, looking at your body um, in the shower, or taking, taking photos of your body or yourself, intimate photos of yourself, the way you look, when you feel your best or when you feel sexy. Um, so we're gonna sit with this for a second. Um, I'd invite you to, uh, we're not, you're not doing other things right now. Like we're together. So put your phone entirely away or turn it off right now. Like actually turn the phone off or put it somewhere where you can't see it and can't hear it. Cause I don't, we don't need that around. It's not where your attention is. Um, and sit wherever you're comfortable. I think that I'm going to sit on the floor um, just because I want to. <laughs> I just normally like to sit on the floor anyways. So I'm just going to do that. And I brought a little blankie of my own from home um, that I can sit on. And um, so I'm crossing my legs. Um, yeah, just connect with your body again. Even some of that tapping or a hug, like a squeeze, tight squeeze and some rocking a little bit. In the breath again, you rub around your body, feel your skin. And wherever you're sitting, wherever your bum is to ground yourself. So in that sit bone. Um, and place your hands behind you. So if you're sitting on a chair to like interlace your fingers behind your back and to open up, look up, take your gaze to the sky. Might make your breath like feel a little bit shaky. Might light up your, your back a little bit too. <laughs> but take a few breaths in. And um, you can also relax your hands behind you. Um, if you're sitting on the floor, um, your hands would be on the floor and your pinkies would be kind of close to each other. So still behind you. Um, and take a couple deep breaths. Um, and then I would say to take your gaze to the left. Invitation to bring your body to a place of softness and gentleness. And to imagine a gentle kiss on the neck. and to acknowledge the space where that feeling is and to treat it as if you're being kissed. I kind of act bashfully and put my head down a little bit more, smile, now look to your right and um, act like you're kissing someone sitting next to you. So offer a kiss to this physical space. Bring your gaze back to center 
and just, um, I don't know, depending on how that felt uh, or how many of you don't have a partner during COVID, <laughs> then it can feel interesting to have that, that experience um, of a little bit of touch. Um, we only have, uh, we have like 15 minutes together. Um, and I really, really want to know, I want to hear about some of the things that were going on in the small circles. Um, and I want to invite um, my friend Ryan before I tell one story to finish. And this is my favorite story. Um, I think that you guys will really, really like it. Um, and I want to invite Ryan back to the space to offer um, some reflection pieces um, before we tell our last story. Thank you so much, Sage. I absolutely love learning from you today. We are very truly grateful that you're able to join us and gift us with this workshop and knowledge. And I'd like to thank all of the participants for joining us in this workshop and in this space and dedicating yourselves to our Moose Hide campaign cause. We are truly appreciative. Yeah, just keep, um, we'll keep those um, reflections rolling in. A couple of them are the same as mine. Um, I said like how important it is to check in with the self and to talk about how we feel towards ourselves. Like the self-love piece I thought was really important. I also said that I wanted to share it with my roommates and people who I love and who I want to have light in their life. Um, I'm going to invite Yamil to bring up um, a story. Um, again, if you're one of the floor sitters or laying down folks, this is a good one for laying down or sitting somewhere comfortable. Um, and if you don't, if you like storytelling, but you would prefer to read it yourself, that's totally cool. And um, we, we have the story here for you, but I'd like to share it with you um, today and um, we'll just follow along this way. So if you're willing to um, yeah, make yourself comfortable and this is gonna be our, our closing kind of circle. Um, this story was written by Richard Van Camp, an indigenous author and it's called Why Ravens Smile to Little Old Ladies as They Walk By. Again, um, make yourself comfortable, eyes closed if you'd like. This is, this is a time of leisure. You're not doing other things right now. It, I'm telling you a story. So however you wanna relax, I would invite you to do that. Um, we, we have a few more moments together. So let's really, let's cherish those. So the story goes like this. A long time ago, the dog rib people had kicked the shit out of Raven. They had it with this fucker. He had tricked, shamrocked, and shenaniganed them one time too many. The dog rib are magnificent fighters. Executing cowboy kicks, bannock slaps, and aerial maneuvers, they are acrobats of destruction when they battle, and I'm so proud to be one. Anyway, this wasn't the first time Raven had done this, and they were tired of it. They kicked the shit out of him and left his eye rammed out. The people decided to rip off his beak. They did, too, those bastards. They pulled it right the hell off and ran back to town. With his black body ruined and crushed, Raven fell inside a coma. How the dog rib hid Raven's beak was they gave it to a blind old woman. They told her what they had done and she agreed to hide it. She was a powerful medicine woman 
and they trusted her. She knew what to do. The woman hid it under her dress, placing it between her thighs, pointing down. The long dress she wore prevented anyone from seeing the hard black beak. With the beak came Raven's tongue. The tongue lonely for a mouth sought her sunshine spot, tasting and wiggling itself all the way in as far as it could go. The old woman jumped when she first felt this, but soon loved what she felt. It felt delicious. From that day on, the old woman experienced such intensity that she was dizzying and lost, and it all felt wonderful at the same time. Well, she just had to stay home. Why leave the house? Thinking their mother was sick, her daughters would bring her food. The old woman insisted that she was all right and smiled for the first time in years. All day she would bounce. Tongue loved its newfound mouth and this reborn woman loved her newfound secret friend. This went on for weeks. The old woman had never been happier. Raven, however, was on the lookout for his beak and tongue because Raven's sense of taste was gone. The nose behind his beak had developed an excellent sense of smell. He walked into Fort Ray and demanded the dog rib people return his beak at once. No one knew anything. That's what they told him. Raven said he wouldn't leave until he found his beak. He had grown skinny and people asked if he had a tapeworm. He told them all to fuck right off. He sat and glared watching everyone in the community. It wasn't long before he overheard the old woman's daughters talking about their mother. They were concerned that being blind, their mother was no longer coming outside to visit. They were concerned that perhaps she was wanting to die. They said they had heard her moaning at all hours of the night, sometimes crying out with a heavy voice. Perhaps one said she's depressed. No, no, the other daughter said, she's never looked happier. The raven's senses tingled. Raven shot up and ran toward the old woman's house. He walked straight in and the old woman was on all fours, rocking herself and arching her back. She shot straight up, straightened out her dress. Who is it? Raven changed his voice. It's me, your daughter. I've come to do your laundry. I'll do it myself, she said. Leave me alone. Are you sick, mother? The voice said. No, she answered, just tired. Suddenly, Raven jumped the old woman and pulled her dress up. There was his beak between her thighs. He pulled, but his tongue wouldn't let go. He pulled and pulled with all his might, and finally it came loose. He placed his beak snugly back on and was about to walk out the door, but stopped to drink what was in his mouth. Holy lick, he said. Raven looked at the old woman and smiled. She winked and smiled back. She had strong medicine and could still feel his tongue inside her. Raven licked at the inside of his beak and enjoyed his newfound friend, which was now secured in his mouth and flew back beak intact to the sky to plot more tricks on, tricks on the dog rib people. And I know he was smiling the whole way. That is why even to this day, when you see a raven open its mouth towards you, you'll see a flaming red tongue and a beautiful pink pussy inside. And this too is why we ravens smile to little old ladies as they walk by. Musi Cho. <sighs> I love that story. <laughs> it's one of my favorite stories. Um, one of my professors at UVic read it to me and introduced me to indigenous erotica. One story of indigenous erotica. Um, if anything that we talked about today resonated with you, um, I wanna echo what Ryan said to continue sharing um, in the chat and to consider offering some feedback to reciprocal consultancy. 
about what you what came up today, how you're feeling today. And I wanted to close this circle um, and our time together just by saying Masi Cho, like thank you so much, like from the bottom of my heart for being willing to to give me your time and to open yourself up to show me your ancestry, to show me inside your inner thoughts and feelings and your needs. I invite you to reflect on what you wrote down um, today, to think about where all of those associations come from and to consider if your lived reality is reflected in what you think is the best quality of life and your imagination of what healthy intimacy looks like. To do a Venn diagram and see how much overlaps and what parts you may be lacking in and would like to grow. Take care of yourself. We had some stuff that we worked through. Um, and again, my name is Sage Lissert and my email is sagelissert at moosehidecampaign.ca. And I think I would invite everyone to message me if you if you would like to talk a little bit more, I would love to talk to you and to hear about some of your thoughts of today and how we can continue this work together. So thank you very much. And I'm gonna play some more music as we leave. If you are here for another minute or two, then I'm gonna be here and I'm just gonna be like dancing in the room. <laughs> so do whatever feels best for you. <laughs> I love you all very much. I love you so much. <laughs> and I'll see you at the fast breaking ceremony at five o'clock, 5.30. Bye.